What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really excited because we're doing a deck that I don't think I've done on the channel just yet and that is Draco Slayer. I think this deck is super cool. However, all the builds online seem to be essentially the same. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a Draco Slayer build that's kind of more of a control build. You guys will see what I mean when we get into the deck profile, but it is very heavily inspired by Triff's build. Not the exact same build, but Triff I think makes some really good points. So if you guys have ever watched his Draco Slayer video, then this build is very much inspired. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys do, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. Deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. It's right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all that. Guys, we're on the road to 10,000. We just hit 8,000 recently. I appreciate every single one of you. I know we can hit 10,000. I wouldn't be here without you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so just before we get into today's video, let me start off by saying that this build of Draco Slayer is less of a combo build and more of a control build. Even though you guys are going to see the cards in here and be like, hey, Spanko, this looks like you like the combo off a lot. But when you play this deck, the boards here, and I'll explain them in a little bit more detail later, but the boards are very simplistic yet very powerful. And I want to say a big shout out to Triff. And the reason for that is because actually I watched his deck profile and he was discussing essentially how this deck plays out. It's different than your typical draco slayer deck and then on top of that i actually witnessed him play it out at our locals the other day and i was like okay actually a lot of the combos in this deck make sense you're playing it a lot slower than your typical draco slayer deck but it is very powerful so big shout out to triff this build is very heavily inspired off of his deck it's not one for one the same but it's very heavily inspired so let's get into the deck profile here we are of course starting off with three ignis phoenix three majesty pegasus three dynamite power load these are the brand new draco slayer cards we're maxing out on all of these you need to see one of the names we all know how powerful majesty is majesty if you guys don't know can literally search any field spell which is insanely powerful in today's format especially post side now in the main deck you're not going to be running every single field spell because you don't know what you're going to be running into however in the side deck which i'm not showing you guys here but you guys can definitely play cards that are like necro valley that are like zombie world that are really good into specific matchups which is very very powerful now i will say one thing about dynamite power load we're not playing dynamis charge in this build which i know a lot of decks like to play the dynamis charge but this build again Again, is just a lot more of a control build it's actually more of like a bestial draco slayer deck rather than just draco slayers with like bestials put in you're actually focused in and around the bestial combos a lot so that's why we're just playing these we're not making room for the charge and the other cards you really just want to be playing the names that you need to play and then we're playing the three luster pendulum luster of course is very powerful it's your tuner which gives you access to some really powerful cards in the extra deck so you got to be playing three of these that's it for the draco slayer monsters onto the other pendulum support we're playing three odd eyes revolution dragon this card is absolutely insane as well as three skull crowbat joker skull crowbat is honestly probably your best normal summon outside of majesty a lot of the time you'll be getting majesty off your pendulum summon anyways but you know skull crowbat is a very powerful normal summon for you and then we're playing the one chaos emperor as well as the one amorph H sloth now a lot of the combos on the end boards you are ending on your hieratic seals hieratic seals on your opponent's turn is going to turn into a sloth and that's going to lock them out of the extra deck which is very very powerful the chaos emperor dragon here i'm just going to quickly briefly explain so this combos off really well with your odd eyes revolution dragon let's say you banish this off of one of your bestial monsters which a lot of the time if you open a bestial you're gonna want to banish your odd eyes revolution because what ends up happening is it lets you recycle the card you activate this pay a thousand life points you get to destroy this card and then you get to add the odd eyes revolution to your hand then you get to use the odd eyes revolution again which is really powerful because that's how you get access to your luster pendulum and then because you're gonna have a light and a dark in your graveyard with your odd eyes as well as potentially a magnum move then you're gonna be able to special summon your chaos emperor which is also really powerful so i really think this card is very important in the combos and i actually think it's a really cool addition to the deck and then of course we're playing the one sky iris in the main deck of course this is where you're going to be searching off your majesty pegasus very integral to a lot of your combos now keep in mind post side deck like i said earlier you guys can just add more field spells in your side deck like necro valley zombie world that are really prevalent in today's format and then you can search those as well off of your majesty pegasus but for now we're playing just the one sky iris in the main deck then we're playing a ton of the bestial monsters we're playing three bestial lubelion three magnum three sarnir and only two druid swarm now this is kind of weird a lot of people typically like to play three druid swarm and only one to two sarnir but the reason i'm actually on three sarnir is because sending your lubelion is very important in this deck you need to be getting this in the graveyard because you want to get it to your field as soon as possible by tributing usually one of your bestial monsters and the reason for that is because it's going to give you access to your branded regained as well as your branded beast which are really powerful cards here branded regains essentially just helps you draw an extra card and then branded beast is another form of disruption that you're going to 
going to be having, which is why it's kind of like a control deck is what I was talking about, because you're going to be sitting on the beast and you're going to be using the beast effect, right? So getting the Lubelion in the graveyard is very powerful and Sarnir does help you get there. And again, these are all just anti tier limit cards, which is very, very powerful. You want to be sure that you're playing a deck that can essentially beat the tier limits matchup. And this deck has a really good time beating the tier limits matchup, right? Especially with the bestial monsters and these cards right here. The thing is, even against non tier limit matchups, again, some of your combos require you to banish your odd eyes revolution. You can banish some of your own cards, which is really powerful. And that's going to essentially help you get these combos off regardless. And then to help you essentially get to every single combo, every single time, every single hand, three pot of prosperity. Prosperity is a really good card. I think you guys should be playing it. And then lastly, we're playing three solemn judgment. I really like solemn judgment in the main deck because a lot of the time you're ending your boards on just like a hieratic seal. So your best boards, let me just say this actually, your best boards are like hieratic seal plus IP plus let's say like an Ignister, right? You're going to be ending on something like that or a Dynaster. But the thing is, Solemn Judgment essentially helps it so that when you always have that board, you can guarantee it's not going to get broken. A lot of the time, your board is also going to end on a Branded Beast, which is really powerful. But again, Solemn Judgment just helps you with another form of, I guess, protection. Uh, everything else is kind of like disruption. Judgment can be disruption, but it can also just be a form of protection, which is really, really powerful. So that rounds it off for the main deck. It is 40 cards on the dot. I will say this also, Prosperity helps you dig for Judgment, which can be very powerful, especially if you've already opened your full combo. So that's why I like the prosperity as well so uh that's it for the main deck 40 cards in the main deck for the extra deck we're playing the one ignister phoenix we're playing the one baron why are we playing the one baron because we're really heavily focused on the bestial monsters which are all level six and your luster which is a tuner is a level four so you actually have access to baron which is really powerful we're playing the one dynaster as well as the one magister i think this is all you're going to need in this deck again this is more of a control build of the draco slayer so you don't actually need to be summoning multiple ignisters in this combo and doing all that sort of stuff so i think one and one is just all you need of course we're playing one beyond the pendulum one guard dragon pitsy as well as one triple burst dragon these cards of course help you with your combos help you revive stuff all of your bestial monsters are dragons so it can be really powerful in that sense and then triple burst of course just helps you when you have the pissy on the field you can make another link monster that's a dragon right if you're not making the seals seals is one of your most important cards so you really want to be playing the seal as well we're playing the one ip mascarena again a lot of the time you want to end your boards on the seals plus an ip at a minimum because what ends up happening is you can go seals into sloth sloth is going to lock your opponent out of the extra deck and then you can use the ip plus something else on the board to make a unicorn that's another form of disruption for you of course we're playing one selene selene is really important a lot of the times this comes up the really nice thing about this deck is you can actually do the combos and you can play this deck without having to go into all of these cards unlike other pendulum cards where it has choke points your opponent can't really stop this deck i mean it doesn't really have a choke point because you're playing all the bestial monsters as well and this engine on its own is just another form of it's another deck essentially you're playing two decks and they just synergize really well together right so that's why i think the selene is really good of course very standard in pendulum we're playing the one axis code talker and the zelantis zelantis is so powerful in this deck being able to reset your ignis to on the same turn is really really powerful so of course we're playing the one zelantis and then we're playing the one abyss dweller and the one babuska babuska against the wanderies matchup dweller against the tier limits matchup if this deck didn't already have enough tier limits hate so that's kind of the deck profile here i hope i explained it well enough the thing is with pendulum i want to kind of show you guys a combo but the thing is with pendulum is depending on where your hand goes your combos are also always going to be different unlike the combo builds of pendulum this deck is much more control so a lot of your combos will also depend on which bis steals did you open how many bis steals did you open but in practicality this deck is very very powerful there's not one single line that you want to take with this deck i think the bis steal package over here with the regain the beast the fact that the synergy between lobelion chaos emperor odd eyes is so powerful you really want to be playing these cards and i think it makes this deck really really powerful and unlike a lot of the other draco slayer builds there's a lot less choke points for this deck again because you're playing it much slower so i think that's really really important so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy i hope i explained the reasoning behind the way this deck is built well enough in the video again very heavily inspired by trips build but it makes a lot of sense you really don't want to combo off and go super heavy with this deck you're really playing it as a control based deck but you can still put out a lot of damage keep in mind the pendulum cards on their own are going to be able to still combo for you so it's not like you can't combo at all but you're not playing to put up seven negates you're playing to play the long game and you're going to be winning those long games so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff catch it right here on the channel we're on the road to 10,000. i want to be here without you guys i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko i don't know Peace.